Hello and welcome to STEM with Mr N, where I perform different demonstrations and explain the science behind what we're seeing. This week's video is supported by the Institution of Engineering and Technology as part of Santa STEM Workshop. This activity involves electrical engineering as I show you how to make a trap to detect Santa. Let's check it out. IET Education's Santa STEM Workshop launched in November. Join Santa in his STEM Workshop to make, create, imagine and discover this Christmas with STEM inspired learning through play. There are craft ideas, recipes, experiments and activities for families to do with kids so that everybody can get into the festive spirit this holiday season. To get involved with these Santa STEM Workshop activities, whether that's baking with marshmallow snowballs to writing poetry, or exploring electric dough to making snow globes, visit the IET.org forward slash Santa. This week's activity comes straight from Santa STEM Workshop. Now picture the scene. It's Christmas Eve, you're lying in bed, and you want to stay awake to try and get a glimpse of Santa, but you know you will not be able to stay awake all night. So what you need to do is make an electronic Santa detector. For this, you will require a dry washing up sponge, a 3 volt buzzer, two AA batteries and a battery pack, some tin foil, a pair of scissors, some masking tape and three crocodile clip cables. The first thing I'm going to do using the scissors is cut round the edge and then through the middle of the sponge to remove the green scouring pad from the back. Remember when you are doing anything with scissors that you should have an adult supervising or doing this part for you because scissors can be dangerous. Once I've removed the green scouring pad, I'm going to use the scissors to put a hole through the middle of the sponge. I don't want the hole to be so big that the sponge falls apart, but equally I don't want it to be so small that I can't see through it. So you want a good sized hole in the middle of the sponge. Then I'm going to cut one piece of tin foil slightly smaller than the piece of sponge and place it on the top. I'm going to attach one of my crocodile clips onto this piece of tin foil and then using the masking tape I'm going to tape the cable and the tin foil onto this side of sponge. Next I'm going to turn the sponge over and do the same again, cut a piece of tin foil slightly smaller than the piece of sponge, attach a different crocodile clip onto this piece of tin foil and then use the masking tape to tape down this cable and the tin foil onto this side of the sponge. It's important to note that the two pieces of tin foil cannot touch unless the sponge is pressed down, at which point they need to be able to touch through the hole you have made in the middle. What we have made here is a pressure pad switch, but now I need to attach it into a circuit like the diagram that you can see on the screen. So now I'm going to put two AA batteries into my battery pack put the back on and make sure my battery pack is set to off. Then I'm going to take a third crocodile lead and clip it onto one of the cables coming out of the battery pack and clip the other end of that lead onto one of the legs of my 3 volt buzzer. I'm going to take one of the cables from the pressure pad switch and attach it onto the other leg of the 3 volt buzzer. And then I'm going to take the other cable from the pressure pad switch and attach it onto the remaining cable from the battery pack. Now you'll see I have a circuit just like in that diagram I showed you earlier. And that diagram is essential learning because engineers need to understand how circuits are drawn and communicated. This involves the use of circuit symbols in circuit diagrams and schematics. This knowledge can be used in the future if you are investigating, designing or making other electrical or electronic circuits. So now that my circuit is complete, I'm going to switch my battery pack to on and now it's time to press down on my pressure pad and see if it sets off that 3 volt buzzer. And it works! My electronic Santa detector lets out a high pitched beep once that pressure pad is pushed down. Once the electronic Santa detector is made, the next thing you need to think about is where you're going to place it. 
This could be behind your bedroom door or at the foot of your bed where your stocking is left, but it needs to be somewhere that Santa is likely to step. It's also a good idea to try and disguise it, because if Santa spots it, he's not going to step on it, he'll just step around it. Now, for me, I'm most likely to fall asleep on the couch on Christmas Eve, so I am going to hide my electronic Santa detector under the rug just inside our back door where Santa is most likely to come in. Now I'm going to test it out and see what would happen if Santa was to come in my back door and step right on my pressure pan switch. That high pitched beep would certainly wake me up if I was sleeping on the couch. But what if you're deaf or what if you have pets that that high pitched noise would annoy or maybe even scare? Well what you can do is replace the 3 volt buzzer with a 2.5 watt bulb with a holder. You'll see that what I'm doing here is unclipping one cable from the leg of the buzzer and attaching it onto one side of the bulb and then I'm doing the same with the cable on the other leg of the buzzer. Now that my circuit is complete with a bulb attached, I'm going to put it in the same position that I had the buzzer, step in the back door and see what happens. And you'll notice that the bulb is lighting up. Now this would not wake me up from sleeping on the couch, so for this one you would need to already be awake with one eye open to spot that bulb lighting up to know that Santa is in the room. So what is actually happening in this activity? Well, when the pressure pad is pushed down, it acts like a switch. The two pieces of tinfoil are touching and that completes the electrical circuit, allowing the electricity to flow right round from the battery pack into the 3 volt buzzer to set it off or into the bulb to light it up. This works because tinfoil is a good conductor. Conductors are materials which allow electricity to pass through them, such as iron, copper and steel. The opposite of a conductor is an insulator, which is a material that does not allow electricity to pass through it. Good insulators include things such as plastic, wood and washing up sponges. To learn more about electricity and conductivity, try the electric dough experiment as part of Santa's STEM workshop by visiting the IET.org forward slash Santa. Well, that's all for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. A huge thank you to the IET for supporting this video and make sure and check out the activities as part of Santa STEM workshop by visiting the IET.org forward slash Santa. As always, I would like to take this opportunity to answer any science questions you have about any science topics at all. So feel free to email me at stemwithmrn at outlook.com and I'll get back to you with answers to your questions. You can subscribe to the channel by pushing the button here and I've added links here to the other STEM demos I've done so far, here to my STEM career interviews and here to my robot review videos. This has been STEM with Mr N exploring a trap to detect Santa.